Hello you beauties, I'm coming back with another sort of discussion video, because recently uh, I have started play playing with uh, one of my friends who got into the game recently, you know who you are baby girl, and playing with them has made me realize how, it's made me realize how reliant people have come on meta slash retrics. Now this is something that I'm probably going to bring up again because I'm working on a bigger video that involves it. But I think one of the biggest issues that a lot of people are having with this game when it comes to improving, when it comes to having fun with the game, when it comes to everything, are meta perks. And or crutch perks, depending on how you look at them. And, and there's two very, very big reasons for this. Number one being, well... They're called crutch perks for a reason. You're essentially using them to cover up some bad aspect of your playstyle. In doing so, you never improve that bad aspect. No. The other side is boredom. Straight up boredom. To cover the first one really quick, because I think it's the easiest one that we actually have data for and everything, and I think really proves my point, is here we have two, two sets of data. One from Nightlight and one from Behavior themselves. Now... Nightlight, if you don't know what Nightlight is, Nightlight is a sort of unofficial DVD like leaderboard type thing where you can upload your endgame screen, it'll automatically collect all the perks that everybody used, add it to data tables and everything, pick the killer you were, all that shit. Um, Nightlight is notoriously a little, but is not a little, very different from Behavior's actual stats because pretty much everybody on Nightlight is experienced at the game has bare minimum a couple hundred hours it's important to look at this though because if you look at the top 10 perks recently good truck pain resonance not a surprise number one and pop goes the weasel number two they are miles above the third perk which is lethal pursuer miles this is extremely bad for a lot of people why is this bad for a lot of people because you're not relying on your actual skill of keeping track of the gens, knowing where people are. You're just using two perks that combined subtract 60% of a gen's progress. That is a metric fuck ton of regression. And this is a bad thing for the majority of people to use because like I said, I'm playing with a friend. I've been starting to play with a friend again who hasn't been playing for a long time. His MMR is pretty low. These killers that he's going against and that I'm going against when I play with them, they're using full meta. Full meta. They'll be they'll have pain res, they'll have pop, they'll have depending on who they are. If it's like an unknown, they'll have nowhere to hide. They'll bring Brim and Brace, Erupt, Deadlock, all these perks, they'll bring no ed, no way out. And then they lose. Because they're not working on the actual skills that make those perks insanely good. They're just using those perks as crutches. Lethal Pursuer is one of the greatest examples. If you're just using Lethal Pursuer every game and you never got the hang of knowing where people are at the beginning, as soon as you take Lethal Pursuer out, you're never going to find anybody in the beginning of the game. It's halting your progress to pretty much a... pretty much a halt. And if that's how you want to play, then go for it but then you're essentially limiting yourself to three perks every game because you need to bring lethal pursuit and i think this is most prevalent when you look at these people playing because whenever you look at newer players or even like mid-tier players who use using like full meta a lot of the times their chase will be pretty damn good they'll be pretty good at chasing but their map pressure their, ma their knowledge of where everybody is on the map, their, just, their macro sense in general will just be so bad that it will single-handedly lose them games. Just them not knowing where survivors are will single-handedly lose them games, right? Because a lot of what these meta sort of uh, meta builds rely on is they'll focus down on heavily stopping gens or finding survivors, a lot of these builds will focus on one thing, one aspect that is usually the weakest part of the killer, and they'll try to minimize it as much as possible. Right? Thing is, newer players don't 
understand how to use that to its fullest potential so it ends up going to waste. So stop using these perks, please, for the love of God. If you want to use a really good slowdown perk, use Corruption. It's also high up there, but guess what? If you just use Corruption, you're giving yourself a good head start while not relying on anything way too heavily. You know, stop using Lethal Pursuer if you're newer at the game. Learn to find survivors without it. Stop using Barbecue. Learn to find survivors without it. I promise you, it'll suck for like the first few days, but then you'll start getting a hang of it. And then when you start using these perks again, you'll get 10 times more use out of them because you actually know how to use everything that the perk does for you. Now, as, as much as I think these perks are hurting people when it comes to their actual improvement at the game, and I'll go into that much more in, like I said, I'm working on a, a bigger, a bigger, more in-depth video when it comes to that kind of stuff. I think a big thing that a lot of people uh, don't seem to consider, talk about, or any of that stuff is the actual fun factor of using builds like this. I think a lot of people are getting sick of the game because they're running meta perks, not even just like singular singular perks, they're just running full meta every single game, and then they wonder why the game's getting bored. On top, on top of the fact that you're using the same build every single game, which is just bound to be boring, you're also not improving. There's this, there's a common sentiment when it comes to video games, which is that your first hour or your first couple of hours will always be the most fun you will have with the game because you're constantly learning, you're playing with other people who are learning, and it's just a, a hell of a lot of fun than when you know everything about the game. Which is, this is kind of connected to the first thing, which is uh, you covering up your mistakes. If you're constantly using these perks, you probably have a decently high win rate if you're even mediocre at killing probably have like at least a 60% 65% win rate that's really good but really boring too so you have you're using the same perks every single game every single game and then on top of that you don't feel like you're improving or anything because you're using those perks it leads to an exceptionally boring gaming experience especially since like, Pop Pain Res has been rampant for months now. So if you've been using it that entire time, you're probably bored out of your mind. You're probably sitting there like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm still playing this goddamn game. When in reality, if you just went for a more chase-heavy build, you just ran, like, I don't know, save the best for last with I'm All Ears, Brutal Strength, and... I don't know, agitation, some shit like that, that you never run before, you'd probably have a hell of a much funner time. Just such a much funner time. Or if you just changed up the killer you're playing. A lot of people are falling into this cycle of using the same shit every game on both sides, and it's, it's kind of messing with your enjoyment of the game just a little bit. Now, with that being said, am I saying meta perks suck and shouldn't be meta or anything like that, or that you should feel bad if you run them? No. If you find them fun, or, you know, if you get into a game and it's like, it's a bunch of P100s, or you just have a feeling they're in a swift or something and you're gonna have to try, if you wanna put them on, you know, go ahead, you play the game however you want. They see a lot of people who are complaining about how stale the game's getting, and how meta-reliant it's getting, but they're the ones who are, you know, relying on the meta, never switching up their build, always using the same shit, always playing the same killers. And if that's what you want to do, it's fine. But then don't complain about it and how unfun everything is and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But that that's my thoughts on it, you know? If you guys have anything else to put on it, be my guest. Now, at least when it comes to the fun aspect of it, it's a very, you know, it's, it's, it's a very personalized thing. 
you know, my fun is exceptionally different from your fun. I like I'm a I have it like in my description and shit that I main pig because I love pig that much. I know a shit ton of people hate pig and don't like playing her. Fun subjective always has been, it always will be. But the sheer amount of people I see who if they just switch things up a bit would have a lot more fun is kind of astronomical. I think I, actually before I send you guys away, I think a great example of this and a great uh, sort of person to look at when you're thinking about this kind of thing is that it's actually fucking Ots. Uh, if anybody doesn't know who Ots is and is watching this video, I'm surprised. Uh, but he's essentially the biggest DVD YouTuber. We all know who he is. And if you look at Ots playing, he's almost never, like, he seems almost never bored. I'm not gonna lie. It'll happen every once in a while, but I genuinely think it's because if you watch his streams, he's constantly doing something different. He's making tier lists sometimes. He's doing challenges. You know, he's doing his random streaks whether it's the all perk streak of 50 win streak doing that he's trying random builds that he thought of or viewers thought of he's constantly trying to master every single killer he's doing all these things that don't lock him down into a, a boring cycle that's gonna make him hate the game in three months like a lot of people do so if honestly if you want to have a much more enjoyable time play like hots you know Maybe, maybe you don't want to incorporate every single killer into your playstyle, but you know, mix, mix it around, have two or three killers that you constantly play, constantly test out different builds, have fun with it, actually try to enjoy the game rather than playing just to win with super strong builds, you know, go for more fun builds, go for more, you know, meme builds that only have like one specific use and you try your damnedest to get it to work with that use. That's my two cents on it, you know? Again, I'm just a random person on the internet talking about this shit. So you're bound to disagree. Some are bound to agree. And like most of my discussion, like most, like all of my discussion videos, I want to hear from everybody and hear what you have to say. Do you think this is a genuine problem with people only using the strongest shit? Do you think it's something that really isn't that bad? What do you think? Leave your comments in the comments below. I know, shocking. That's where you leave them. Like, subscribe, do all that. Again, I appreciate you guys whenever you show me love. The last few videos have gotten pretty good reception, at least for somebody of my size. Pretty good reception. And I couldn't be happier with it. We're slowly growing in survive in survive. I keep in saying survivor count we keep growing in subscriber count and i can't thank you guys enough for that with that all being said i'll see you guys in the next video or on the next stream goodbye